सबको लाल सलाम आज लेन की 150वीं जन्मदिन पर दुनिया के मेहनत कश जनता के नेता मजदूर वर्ग के नेता शोषण के खिलाफ लड़कर जो साबित किया इतिहास में कि एक बिना शोषण की व्यवस्था कायम हो सकती है और उसकी ताकत को पूरे दुनिया में दिखाया है वो महाक्रांतिकारी लेनिन उनकी 150वीं जन्मदिन पर हम उनको आप सभी लोगों की तरफ से अपने कॉमरेडों की तरफ से दुनिया के कॉमरेडों की तरफ से उनको लाल सलाम अर्पित करते हैं वेन दिस टॉक वॉज फर्स्ट डिजाइन ए लॉट ऑफ कॉमरेड्स दैट आई शुड बी स्पीकिंग इन हिंदी और ये ओरिजिनली दी आइडिया केम फ्रॉम द तेलंगाना स्टेट कमेटी एंड द आइडिया वॉज टू स्पीक इन तेलुगू विच इज माई मदर टंग మొదట ప్రస్తావన ఈ రకంగా లెనిన్ గురించి మాట్లాడాలనేది తెలంగాణ కమిటీ రాష్ట్ర కమిటీ నుంచి వచ్చింది తెలుగులో మాట్లాడమని వాళ్ళు కోరారు కానీ తర్వాత దేశంలో మన పార్టీ ప్రధాన కార్యదర్శి కనుక అన్ని ప్రాంతాల్లోనూ అందరికీ అర్థమయ్యేటట్టు మాట్లాడాలని సజెషన్స్ ఏవైతే వచ్చాయో దానికి ఆధారంగా ఇంగ్లీష్లో మాట్లాడతాను పెద్ద ఎత్తున మన కామ్రేడ్స్ హిందీ స్పీకింగ్ కామ్రేడ్స్ వాళ్ళు హిందీలో మాట్లాడుకుంటున్నారు కనుక హిందీలో కూడా చివరిని ప్రయత్నిస్తాను సారాంశం నేను ఏం చెప్పదలుచుకున్నాను ఆ విషయాలని చెప్పడానికి వీఆర్ అబ్జర్వింగ్ లెన్స్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఎయిత్ బర్త్డే ఇన్ రాదర్ అన్యూజువల్ అండ్ వెరీ వెరీ డిఫికల్ట్ సర్కమ్స్టాన్సెస్ నార్మలీ ద పార్టీ వుడ్ హెవ్ కండక్టెడ్ ఏ కంట్రీ వైడ్ క్యాంపెయిన్ అన్ ఐడియాలజికల్ క్యాంపెయిన్ ఏ క్యాంపెయిన్ ఆఫ్ అజిటేషన్స్ అండ్ స్ట్రగుల్స్ లైక్ వీ డెడ్ ఫర్ ది సెంచనరీ observing the centenary of the October Revolution and the 200th birth anniversary of Karl Marx. But under these circumstances, that is not possible. The pandemic that we all of us are today fighting demands very severe restrictions, a physical distancing combined with social solidarity. for us as communists it's not social distance and it's this social solidarity that unfortunately is being ruptured efforts are there to rupture it on communal lines which only weakens our strength to fight the pandemic all these must be completely eschewed and the government should have to take strict action to ensure that people's unity is maintained the world has faced such pandemics in the past human civilization has been through many such pandemics successfully fought eventually science triumphed we brought out vaccinations and prevented many a death subsequently because of such diseases like leprosy or smallpox or cholera or malaria or various other pandemics like the plague there's a very interesting uh, poem written by Bertolt Brecht during the infancy of the Russian Revolution where he speaks of a small hamlet which produced experts in carpet weaving and he says how the people of Kuyal Bulak, that's the name of that province, honored Lenin. They had collected money to erect a bust but the Red Army officer would come there instead said that with this money they buy petroleum and pour it over the swamp that is breeding the mosquitoes causing the malaria pandemic and save themselves from disease and that is how this village honored lenin and this is what brecht had to say that the people there helped themselves by honoring lenin honored him by helping themselves and thus had understood him well that is lenin he was marxist but as all marxists are he was above all a supreme humanist the final authority power the movers and creators of history are human beings and it is this human being whose strength internal strength and potential has to be realized in the task of social emancipation 
हमारे देश के अंदर निरा, निराला साहब सूर्यकांत त्रिपाठी निराला मशहूर कवि मशहूर लेखक वो खुद याद करते हैं 1917 की प्लेग का पैंडमिक जो हुआ था जिस समय उनको संदेश मिला था कि घर आइए बहुत हालात खराब है जब तक पहुंचते हैं उनकी वाइफ की डेथ हो जाती है उनके साथ जो रिश्तेदार थे उनका भी एक के बाद एक मौत होने लगता है चार बच्चे रह जाते हैं और एक निराला की गोद में सोता है रात को दोनों सो जाते हैं निराला और ये लड़की छोटी सी और सुबह उठते ही निराला देखता है कि वो लड़की गुजर गई ये सब यादें वो लिखते हुए कुली भाग करके एक रचना में उसके बाद निराला बने बहुत बड़े कवि जिन्होंने प्रेरणा लाखों लोगों को हमारे देश के अंदर शोषण के खिलाफ भेदभाव के खिलाफ लड़ने के लिए ये प्रोत्साहन जो दिया इन सब से हम गुजर चुके हैं सवाल ये है कि मानव जाति बचेगी जरूर लेकिन आप और हम और जितने कम से कम नुकसान हो उसके लिए हमें कोशिश करने की जरूरत है एंड इन दिस स्ट्रगल अगेंस्ट द पैंडमिक कम्स ऑफ द एलिमेंट्री ट्रूथ द पैंडमिक मे नॉट द पैंडमिक मे नॉट डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन वन ह्यूमन बीइंग एन अदर बट कैपिटलिस्ट एक्सप्लोइटेशन एंड क्लास सोसाइटी डज इट डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन दोज हु हैव द कैपेसिटी द एबिलिटी टू फाइट दिस पैंडमिक एंड दोज हु डू नॉट and that is why the danger today is those who are today deprived of their livelihood because of this lockdown deprived of shelter they are the ones that are likely to suffer most and this is what all of us need to prevent and that is why the cpm had made asked the government to immediately give cash transfers and distribute free food for all the needy so that non pandemic deaths do not emerge to be more than those who lost their lives because of the pandemic and this is where the question of fighting this exploitative class divided society comes into sharp focus unless this is fought and this exploitative society is overthrown complete human liberation and the flowering of the human essence is not possible and that is where the contribution and role of lenin is most similar it has been a normal practice that we normally when we discuss in the study classes about lenin his contributions we start discussing his major works very correct whether it's state and revolution what is to be done imperialism the highest stage of capitalism each one of these are absolutely essential to understand and grasp so that the revolutionary movement in today's conditions can be taken forward but i do not propose here to go into these details of the works but to try and understand holistically why lenin embarked on this sort of uh, this sort of a work why is it that he took up these tasks at the crucial moment of time when the revolutionary movement in its twisted turns required clarity and on the need for that clarity came some most of his major works now this comes because lenin of all the marxists that have been there earlier and during his time was the one who fully grasped the essence of what marxism is about and internalized this and to the extent that this internalization provided him that ability and the capacity to write and intervene theoretically practically and in terms of organizing the people yeah, on almost every aspect of human endeavor from philosophy from science to the day to day tactics of the revolutionary movement from understanding the differentiation of classes of identifying who can be the allies in the proletarian revolution on each one of these and most importantly on identifying the contradictions and in those contradictions what is coming to the forefront 
and how to utilize that contradiction in order to advance the revolutionary movement. And from this was born his very, very important uh, contribution of imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. And <coughs> his, Lenin's important rise is because he is the first Marxist, a communist, to have shown the practicality of establishing what Marx had famous exhortation. Philosophers so far have only interpreted the word. The point, however, is to change it. And yes, he changed and showed the world it's possible to have an exploitation-free society, built, consolidated socialism in the short span of his life, and but his contributions have left be, be, behind a tremendous legacy of the epic endeavor of human beings in the task of building an exploitation-free society and the might of the Soviet Union that eventually emerged after defeating Hitler and fascism in the Second World War was there for the whole world to see. So Lenin was able to make this and his unique, holistic, pioneering contribution to the treasure house of Marxism begins with his own understanding of what Marxism is all about. He says in one of his uh, writings, Who the Friends of the People Are, the reason why millions of people are attracted to Marxism is because this is the only philosophy, the only philosophy that combines two aspects. It is at the same time revolutionary and supremely scientific. This combination does not happen because the founders of Marxism, Marx and Engels, combined both these qualities in their own life and work. But this is intrinsic and inseparable to Marxism. And it is this combination of revolutionary and being supremely scientific that has given, that gives Marxism the quality which Lenin internalized. Like I said, that gave him the ability to intervene in every aspect of human endeavor from philosophy to science to, to actual physical sciences into the, all areas of social activity of human beings and the nitty-gritty of tactics. And this is something which we have to understand. The other aspect which I think explains this holistic nature of Lenin's contribution was his uh, complete understanding of what and how Marxism has to be developed. And he constantly said that the most essential thing in Marxism, the living soul of Marxism, is the concrete analysis of concrete conditions. It is the ability to understand the changes in the concrete conditions and on that basis the ability to arrive at a correct analysis, a scientific analysis, combining both these qualities of the, revolution, of the revolutionary potential, emancipatory vision of Marxism and being supremely scientific. This, con this aspect of concrete analysis of concrete conditions that clears the way from the muddy waters of subjectivism and subjective conclusions very often many of us fall prey to. Objectivity is the basis for concrete analysis of concrete conditions and it is on the basis of the combination of both these aspects, Marxism being supremely scientific at the same time revolutionary potential and the concrete analysis of concrete conditions that Lenin proceeded on his epic struggle to emancipate the people of Russia and on that basis for the emancipation of the global exploited sections under the leadership of the proletariat. And each one of these works are products of both these aspects. Above all, 
on the tactics he employed at any po every point of time in every twist and turn of the revolutionary movement and how he eventually succeeded in overcoming the difficulties that these conditions, concrete conditions were posing. This is something that needs to be properly also studied. While on Lenin, Lenin's contributions, I think there are many works that need to be undertaken and self-study is the most important thing for our comrades that has to be undertaken. But a fundamental text which should be properly studied is Stalin's foundations of Leninism. And on the tactics that he employed, Comrade M. Basopunaya, on the occasion of the centenary of Lenin's birth, had written an article in the People's Democracy then that was later reproduced in 2015 where he called that Lenin as the master tactician of the working class in his struggle for political power and its consolidation. <clears throat> and this is something that I'll return to subsequently. But the, all these aspects are connected, as I said earlier, with the internalizing of the holistic understanding of what Marxism as a creative science is all about. And the fundamentals of dialectics on the question of studying the contradictions that are present at any point of time and how they should be, they should be utilized for the advance of the revolutionary movement. Lenin enriched in that sense some aspects of the analysis of capitalism that Marx and Engels had arrived at. Marx, in fact, tells you one of the laws of capitalist production and capitalist development is the increasingly the tendency of centralization and concentration of capital. Marx himself in his lifetime towards the end and Engels later after Marx in volume three of Capital Note the growth of monopoly capitalism, the emergence of finance capital as a very important form. These are noted, but the, the manner in which this monopoly, this centralization and concentration of capital emerged in the beginning of the 20th century was noticed by Lenin, where he talks, then he notices that a new stage is being reached by capitalism and that was the stage of imperialism. And with imperialism came a new set of contradictions that each they amalgamated the finance capital of, of each country competing with the finance capital of other imperialist centers in order to occupy the world for their exploitation and their capital accumulation and hence profit maximization which is the motive force of capitalism and inter-imperialist contradictions developing which Lenin saw was the opportunity to utilize these inter-imperialist con uh, contradictions for the revolutionary advance and this inter-imperialist contradictions noting that fully at the time of the first world war Lenin gave the slogan of converting this imperialist war or a war between imperialist powers into a civil war for the liberation of the Russian people. And it is through such an understanding he was able to, as he called, that imperialism has enchained the whole world and the possibility is to break that chain at its weakest link. And the weakest link at that point of time in human history and development of capitalism was Russia. And that is where the blow was struck. So it is on the basis of such a scientific understanding, analysis, a concrete analysis of concrete conditions, that Lenin came to the correct conclusions. But the correct conclusions required to be practically implemented. And that needed, most of all, that the organization of the working class, of the proletariat, the vanguard of the proletariat, that is the Communist Party, its strength links with the people and its capacity to create conditions 
whereby the slogans given by the vanguard of the proletariat, that is the party, Communist Party, are internalized by the people who themselves start giving the same slogans. That is when the revolutionary movement emerges into strength. And he did that through his major works and revamping the entire party, creating the party as being capable of such uh, conditions and strength and capacity to bring people together into struggles, intensifying these struggles and mounting the class offensive against the rule of capital. And therefore, in today's contemporary world, the important aspect to understand is that understanding the concrete conditions of today and the concrete analysis on that basis, the importance of strengthening the subjective factor, that is strengthening the capacity of the Communist Party, the vanguard of the proletariat, and its links with the people, which is crucial in meeting the challenges that we face in current current world situation and in India today. Because one thing is obvious, is apparently clear both Marx, Engels as well as Lenin, that whatever be the intensity of the crisis, capitalism does not ever collapse automatically. Capitalism has to be overthrown and this can only be done by the organized strength of the exploited people under the leadership of the working class. And it is here the tactics that Lenin employed are an important lesson for us. How to unify the exploited sections, the worker present alliance, which went first to study scientifically the class differentiation amongst the peasantry, which he did for Russia. And on that basis, identifying the potential allies. And on that basis, building up this worker present alliance as the foundation for the advance of the revolutionary movement. These are all aspects that are very, very important for us today to grasp, imbibe, internalize and to utilize in meeting the challenges that we face today. Under globalization, after the demise of the Soviet Union particularly, when the situation emerged where the correlation of class forces moved in favor of imperialism vis-a-vis -vis socialism, at that point of time, you find the aggression of capital to maximize the profits reaching a crescendo under this neoliberal order of globalization. This neoliberal order permitted the space for capital to maximize its profits and this was also done on the basis of the emergence of international finance capital which became the leader of the rule of capital globally, which was leading the neoliberal order in order to prize open the economies and markets of all parts of the world for its exploitation. And this emergence of international finance capital and under its leadership, neoliberal globalization taking place. Does it mean that Lenin was wrong or his analysis of inter-imperialist contradictions with one imperialist center competing with the other for the division and redivision of the world that led to two inter-imperialist wars with the basic objective was to divide or redivide the world? Was, is that wrong? No. Lenin in his time, on the basis of the concrete conditions then, noted this and on that basis employed the correct tactics in order to utilize the contradictions of that time in order to advance. In today's world, these conditions have changed. It is up to us to make this concrete analysis. But Lenin had noted, even at that stage, that over a period of time, it is finance capital that will emerge as the dominant form of capital subsuming all other forms of capital, industrial, commercial, all other forms of capital under its leadership. And that is precisely 
what we are seeing under neoliberal globalization. <coughs> in this situation, therefore, <coughs> in this situation, where the world is under this sort of a global order, the most important element is to resist this in our individual countries and the process of resisting this will naturally pit us with the domestic ruling classes who are today not merely collaborators but partners of the neoliberal order. And in this process the intensification of exploitation manifest in the, in the amazing levels to which inequality has, has grown in the world and in India. Today shows that the degree of exploitation intensifying in itself creates conditions whereby a new crisis is, emerge, emerges for capitalism itself and this neoliberal order itself was pregnant with the possibilities of a new rupture that is likely to happen, which happens essentially because as profits soar, intensification of exploitation takes place, there is lesser and lesser amount of money or purchasing power in the hands of the majority of global population. Capitalism can never survive if what it produced is not sold. Profits can never be made unless they are sold, the products. But to sell the products, people need the capacity to buy. If that is constantly being dwindled, then a new form of a crisis emerges, which cannot be sustained by all sorts of artificial bubble creations by finance capital. And all these bubbles cannot keep expanding like balloons to infinity. They will burst, and it did burst in 2008. And the impact of that crisis of 2008 continues, continues to intensify. On the eve of this pandemic, the world was actually moving towards a possible global recession. In India, the economy was not merely slowing down, but we had already entered into a recession. And this slowing down was causing immense misery to vast majority of our people in our country and the unbridled policies of neoliberalism and the accompanied policies of primitive accumulation of capital. For a Marxist, primitive is not a historical category. For a Marxist, primitive is an analytical category. Depending on the correlation of political forces globally and domestically, capitalism employs all methods to maximize profits. When it sees that it has got an advantage after the demise of the Soviet Union and socialism in major parts of the world, it sees the opportunity to go back to the, the accumulation through coercion, not through accumulation to capitalist production, accumulation through coercion, that is primitive forms of accumulation, and that primitive forms of accumulation accompanied by high levels of corruption is precisely what is happening both in the world and in India today. The levels of crony capitalism we have seen here in India, the levels of crony capitalism that you are finding world over, and this crisis is giving a political expression of a political rightward shift. And this rightward shift is essential for capitalism and the ruling classes. Why? Because as exploitation intensifies, as people's life become more and more miserable, the revolt against this starts growing. If this growing discontent among the people finds a revolutionary expression, that revolutionary expression can pose a danger for the rule of capital itself. In order to detract that from the revolutionary, that revolutionary potential that this intensified exploitation has, it is necessary to divert the discontent into different channels and that emerges through the growth of xenophobia, through the growth of racism, through the growth of saying that like the USA with its president saying that they will not allow immigrants to come into the country so that the jobs can be protected for Americans. 
rousing passions on the recreation of the American dream by not allowing outsiders to come and take up their jobs, Trump won the elections. It's happening all over, Bolsonaro in Brazil, Erdogan in Turkey, our, our own RSS BJP Narendra Modi here in India. This rightward shift is something politically that you're taking. They are posing a, I mean, a threat to the revolutionary movement which can advance and has the potential to advance because of this intensified exploitation and to divert people's attention away into different emotional appeals. And for us in India, for another reason as well, you have the, the uh, threat of communal polarization that has always been the objective of the RSS to convert the secular democratic republic of India into their vision of what our party program defines as the fascistic project of converting the secular democratic republic into a Hindutva Rashtra. That conversion is based on deepening communal polarization and unfortunately even in the face of this pandemic you find that these efforts at sharpening and deepening this communal polarization is taking place in, so that they can achieve their objective. So here both these aspects combine, this rightward shift as well as this aspect of converting the character of the Indian Republic into their fascistic project of a Hindutva Rashtra. Now it is here that the importance of honoring Lenin comes in, of saying that in these circumstances, in every country, the task of every communist is to strengthen the subjective factor, the links of the vanguard of the proletariat, that is the Communist Party, with the people, identify the possible potential allies, and on that basis, build that alliance that can take on this sort of a rightward shift in the politics, as well as the communal fascistic danger that the RSS and its ideology ideology has and seeks to achieve in today's conditions. And this is where to learn from Lenin in terms of the master tactician, as Comrade Basopaneya had described him, becomes very, very important. And it is this that we must understand here that the three principles of how Stalin describes Lenin's tactics and how he mastered the tactics, that the three principles of Lenin's tactic, tactical line, he says, quote Stalin tells us, one is the correctly understanding the national peculiarities and the characteristics in each country. Second, utilizing the smallest possibilities of mass allies for the proletariat, even if temporary, vacillating, wavering, or unreliable. And thirdly, truth that propaganda and action alone are not enough for political education as political experiences of the masses. Stalin sums up this tactical approach of Lenin, saying that concrete analysis of concrete conditions, verification, checking up correctness through practice, alertness of mind to every twist and turn, and propaganda agitation alone are not sufficient. The practical experience of the masses is most important. It is on the basis of employing such revolutionary tactics that today, in every country, the communists will have to advance. Paying homage to Lenin means actually to strengthen ourselves and our resolve in today's situation to meet the right-wing offensive of the political shift of the rule of capital globally, to stop or prevent this intensification of exploitation for the continuous maximization of profits, to organize the exploited, all sections of the exploited under the leadership of the working class, 
and to identify those sections through which to build up the alliance between the working class and the peasantry, which is the crux or the axis, let's say, the axis of taking the revolutionary movement forward. This is, in a sense, would be the best and the only way in which we as communists can pay homage to Lenin. So it's not really a homage, but a rededication. It's a rededication to redouble our resolve, to strengthen the subjective factor in these conditions, that is the party and its links with the people, its ability to rouse the people into action and to make people realize through their own experiences the need for a revolutionary transformation. Yes, there are big challenges, challenges of the rule of capital, challenges of the neoliberal exploitation, challenges in India, which is combined with this communal uh, polarization and the jingoistic appeals that come on that basis and the entire question of dividing the exploited sections in the name of religion, in the name of communalism, while we seek to unite the exploited section in order to advance the revolutionary movement, communalism and this right-wing political offensive leads, tends to disrupt this unity of the exploited sections. That is what we have to fight against. So come, let us all together today rededicate ourselves to carry and strengthen the revolutionary process forward and that would be the only proper homage to Lenin. And that homage, like the weavers of Koyan Bulak, paid to Lenin, that by helping themselves, they help Lenin, and by doing that, they understood that Lenin was the leader of the world proletariat. His national and colonial thesis was the one that united the struggle for socialism that the consolidation of socialism in the Soviet Union with the national liberation struggles against colonialism in all other countries of the world. That's why the Communist Party sprang up. Ho Chi Minh, in fact, exclaimed, saying that he saw the, his eyes open when he read this thesis of Lenin's. And he says, on that basis, went back from France as a student to Vietnam, organized the people, and successfully con succeeded in the successful Vietnamese revolution. Mao Zedong and the Chinese Communist Party, assuming the leadership of the National Liberation Movement in China, like in Korea, like in Cuba. This was the world proletarian revolution for which Lenin made this very, very seminal contribution. And he had set up the University of the Toilers of the East in Tashkent where many a revolutionary from all over the world when they for both training to increase their capacities and enrich their own potential return back to their countries like many from India who would come back from there from this university to set up the work among the Indian peasantry to work for the unity of the working class and the peasantry in the worker peasant alliance and all this was various aspects of Lenin's contribution to the world revolution. So Lenin was the leader of the world proletarian revolution, remains the leader. His work continues to be the inspiration. And in today's conditions, all of us will have to rededicate ourselves to redouble our resolve, as I said earlier, to carry the revolutionary movement forward. So once again, Lal Salam to Lenin and to all of us and success in our struggle.